All right, everyone. Well, welcome uh, to this talk here. Uh, we're going to talk about the new generation of mainframers. And uh, we got one person that's a multi-generational mainframer. And uh, I guess I guess I'm a, a mainframer by association. You're the new mainframer. Yes, yes. So Len Santolucia, Len, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Len Santolucia, and I am the uh, CTO and business development manager for a company called Vicom Infinity based here in New York. Uh, we are a Converge company as well as a IBM Platinum business partner. And I also happen to be the chairperson of the Linux Foundation Open Mainframe Project, working with John all the time and some of our folks here in the audience, some of our colleagues. Absolutely. Um, and I'm John Mertick. I'm one of the program directors here at the Linux Foundation. I have the uh, fortunateness of working with the Open Mainframe Project for the last six years, um, and we've seen a, a huge amount of growth and some uh, some really exciting stuff. And I would just say, even broadly in the mainframe industry, um, has really came um, really into be here. So, but first, I think we always have to set context when we're talking about mainframe because mainframe is probably one of those terms that you see thrown around of any big mysterious computer out there. Um, also, sometimes uh, people look at this picture here and think that's a mainframe, um, which it is. That that, that that is actually, but that's not what the mainframe is uh, today. That's the mainframe if you're riding, you know, the Spaceship Earth ride at you know Disney World or you know seeing an old movie. But the mainframe today is is what we got up here. Um, you know, the Z15. And, and Lynn, I know you you deal with these boxes a lot. Like, you know, what what is this Z15? Well. Uh, the history, it goes like this. The first picture you saw there was in the uh, 50s uh, when uh, my uh, grandfather and father were working on it at that time. I'm a, a third gen. And then uh, I came about with IBM in the late 70s. And uh, this evolved into something called a Z family, which the Z stands for zero downtime. And... Uh, a lot of people ask the question, well, what is a mainframe? And it's a very complicated question to answer because people think of it as the MVS, ZOS, VSE, TPF, traditional types of things. And then on the other side of our mouths, we can say things about Linux and containers and uh, virtual servers and all kinds of things that it could run at, at, at the same time. So the specs that you see here up on the screen are, you know, it's the fastest microprocessor in the business and it has 190 of them. And that's only just for the applications. It doesn't count anything in there for the IO uh, processors, which are several hundred of and other specialty processors in there that so the application processors don't get uh, overburdened with anything else. but running the actual applications. And um, it wasn't too long ago uh, in those 50s and 60s time frame that KB was the size of the memory and it was very precious and very expensive. Mm -hmm. Now we throw around terabytes of memory in this thing like it's uh, penny candy. I remember seeing pictures of them loading uh, 40 megabyte hard drives onto you know Pan Am 707s and they're about the size of a shipping crate. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's definitely, as I like to say, because of my, of my grandpa, uh, it's not your grandfather's mainframe anymore. This thing is really uh, able to do so much more and uh, still preserve the investments everybody has made over the years with uh, their, their uh, heritage applications, as I like to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's an amazing platform for Linux and open source. Absolutely. But, but you know, What's really interesting is, you know, and I've seen this very much over the last six years, is we're seeing a whole new wave of people being interested in mainframe, and especially people at the early age of their career. I mean, it's always the, the misnomer people think is like, oh, mainframe is, you know, for, for people on the back end of their career. Yeah. But we're seeing so many people in the early parts of their career now interested in mainframe. And we have a mentorship project um, that has brought, you know, well over 50 students into it. Um, that's making a gigantic impact. I know you've worked with some of yeah, them. Yeah. 
Um, some, some of them worldwide, not just only here. In the oh, yeah. States. Yeah, and I think we've worked on students on five different continents. Yeah. Um, so it's made a huge, huge impact. So I guess the big question for everyone here is, why are they interested? What has made this an appealing area? And, you know, it, and I think I've really, I think we kind of pulled together three really interesting ideas here. Um, the first, I think, is where we're actually seeing investment happening. So, you, you know, you, you, we've always heard of people trying to move off of mainframe, trying, people trying to get rid of their mainframes, you know that. The reality that we're seeing, and I know you see it on the front lines, mm -hmm. is people are putting money back into their mainframes and they're expanding their footprint. I mean, you know, what, what do you see in there? Well, I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know is that this generation, the, this last generation, most current generation of Z, Z15, is actually the most successful mainframe in the history of the mainframe, which is over 50 years now. Uh, it has shipped more systems than ever. And it, for some reason or other, it keeps on going. Uh, and um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact of all the different things it offers. And the from the mentorship program, the menteeship program, what, I'll tell you a little story. There was a college that we went to and we said hey why don't you uh, program this and here's the system we didn't tell them what it was we didn't tell them it was a mainframe at all and they started working in you know java and linux and all kinds of other things they like to containers and whatever and at the end when they were done with their project we said to, to that to them did you know you were working on a mainframe and they were like stunned mm -hmm. they were absolutely amazed this is mainframe mm -hmm. you know because they had the connotation of uh, that first picture we showed in right, some right. cases and um, when they had that kind of experience they said we can live with this we can do work on this and we can mm -hmm. go to work and then when they started hearing the kind of uh, money they could make in some of the firms that right around here you know I guess we I just was walking on stage and I I just saw I think it was was it JP Morgan Chase that was just presenting here I, I know the lady um, and uh, they have tons of mainframes, City, you know, Morgan Stanley, all, Goldman, all these guys around town, uh -huh. especially in financial services. And when you hear the kind of bucks they can do and the, how uh, much in demand they are, they uh -huh. can uh, they get quite interested after. And then the icing on the cake was a session just like the one we just had uh -huh. here with the college. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think what's interesting is it's not just legacy applications that are being invested in. We're seeing we're new trying. workloads overall. And, and I think, you know, this article, I encourage you to come check this out. I mean, it's about, a, you know, it's, it's from last spring. It was right after. But what, what I really found interesting here was, you know, new feature deployments is actually outpacing other platforms on here. And two is it's not just, you know, putting old, you know, kicks and you know, uh, you know, more legacy, you know, sort of applications. We see people doing DevOps in the mainframe. We see them integrating into Blockchain. how the rest of their, yeah, the whole nine yards here, um, moving to an agile. So you're seeing a lot of this coming together and you're seeing, you know, wh what I see here, and I think you see, is these companies seeing that the mainframe has a huge intrinsic value to it. Um, and now, as we're seeing more people becoming interested in it, they're wanting to double down their investment and at the same time recognize, hey, I can invest in mainframe you know, for the key workloads. Um, and I guess I clicked this by accident, but I no, think I segued right. myself right in there. Things have a way of working out, Jeff. They do, they do. It's easier to develop on these um, you know, than years, years past. Um, you know, not only are we just seeing you know, modern languages, I hate to always say the word modern, but just kind of the languages newer. you see today, the newer, newer languages. The newer language. But we also see um, languages and tools that are native to the mainframe becoming so much easier. Um, you know, you can write COBOL code using Visual Studio um, code or Eclipse J. Um, you have a technology like Zoe that's, that's opening things up quite a bit um, and is really just giving working with the mainframe, just, you know, REST APIs, got it. You know, CLI on your laptop, got it. Um, you know, having a GUI desktop that connects, you know, all those things. Um, and I know, you know, you all have do a ton of development and you've, you're do, leading some modern development on the mainframe. I mean, I think you've seen this impact firsthand. Oh, yeah, especially with the Zoe project, uh, one of the biggest uh, projects on the Linux Foundation Open Mainframe group here. Um, 
we actually developed a, a secure voice assistant. We call it Viva, Viacom Infinity Voice Assistant, mm -hmm. and it interfaces to Zoe, so you can actually talk to your mainframe and ask it to do what you want it to do. And, uh, you know, talk about uh, bridging the skills gap. It can't get much easier than talking to a mainframe. Not at all, not at all. And a lot of those technologies that were used to build that, you know, I mean, you know, built on a Raspberry Pi, using Zoe for the interface, you know, not dealing with green screens and things like that, but just modern tooling. That is really sort of the key here. And, you know, if you make the tools, you know, the same as what you're using everyone else, all becomes a lot easier. Yeah, there's no if ands or buts, as they say. Exactly, exactly. And there's a great article here I found, you know, develop on the mainframe just like it's any other cloud platform. I mean, that's that's really where the name of the game is now, and that's where we're seeing so much of this shifting to. In fact, they call the mainframe the hybrid multi-cloud environment with the security that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it has, that's why it's, I think, gotten uh, so much into the inroads of uh, to in, inroads into some of these larger firms. and. Even some smaller firms that never thought they'd ever think about a mainframe, they never had a mainframe. It's mm -hmm. just made it so much easier. Exactly. And, and you kind of hinted earlier here about the mainframe job situation. And there's a ton of them. Yeah. I, the last estimate I saw, John, was about 55,000. Yeah. yeah. So there's plenty of work out there. And they are very well rewarding careers. They're not just a job. They're, they're really careers that people can turn into. Uh, nice long uh, times with and long term careers in, in general, mm -hmm. and great even at an entry level. You know, so somebody who's just getting new into this space here, um, you know, coming out of school, um, you know, junior developers are you know well north of one hundred thousand, one hundred fifty. I mean, these are these are figures here from you know you can see on the article you know well over a year ago, and oh, yeah. we, we know yep. what inflation's done right now. So. Yep. Um, <laughs> You know, the, the, these are really, really, really well-paying jobs, and they're plentiful, they're out there, and, you know, people are seeing that, and now they're, you know, taking the classwork to invest in it. Oh. We lost our... And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. Um, little blip. Little blip there. Little blip. But, yeah, I, I you know, I, th I find that really is sort of a, a fascinating thing, and, you know, is it... Do you find it, and I know you work with customers that are trying to hire in mainframe, you probably are hiring too... Is it hard? Is it becoming harder to find this talent? Is this talent like what? What is it like for you all to find talent right now? Well, a while back it was pretty tough. Yeah, uh, and it's still not where it needs to be. Right, uh, and that's why we have the Open Mainframe Project and its mentorship program, and mm -hmm. trying to encourage schools to do the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're working with other schools to maybe do capstone projects where students work on it for a year mm -hmm. for somebody to do something uh, that needs to be done on a mainframe environment for some XYZ company. Yep. And by doing that, and then uh, IBM themselves uh, came out with something called IBM Z Explore. That's uh, spelled with an X-P-L-O-R. You can see it on the web, and it's a education hub for anybody that wants to teach or learn about the Z, about IBM mainframes. And uh, so it's, and we had mastered the mainframe contests going on that was teaching at the same time people were having fun and learning and getting some exposure to events like this, and uh -huh. going to the, the big mainframe event known as SHARE. It's run a couple times a year. So it's, it's getting better, but we can't take our eye off the ball because there's still more work to be done because there's, but, it's not just the mainframe. I'm finding out that technology. Yeah, it's it's an, it's an in general problem here we, for we, sure. We really need more technologists. And you know, Arvind. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows the name Arvind Krishna from the CEO of IBM. I happen to uh, know him. He's uh, got a commitment now to try to educate something in the range of a couple hundred thousand people uh, over the next uh, few years. Uh, so he's putting some major investments behind that too. So. Uh, as are other places. Absolutely, but I think the big takeaway is is like you've seen that uptick starting to happen. Oh, yeah. You've seen oh, yeah. so many more people that are out there on the market. I mean, the jobs are still way out there. There's still tons of them, but there's more of people that are saying, "Hey, I'm turning my career into mainframe. I'm investing. I'm you know I'm making this the base of my career." So you know that that pool of candidates is jumping up quite a bit. And having been in the business as long as I have, a lot of people in the mainframe. 
world know of me and they contact me, hey, Len, you got anybody I can hire and you know where I can go find, you know, so I, I see it and feel it all the time. Yeah. And uh, and it's not just only uh, traditional applications, it's uh, the Linux stuff and everything else that people are doing more on uh, the IBM mainframe with. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is so this is our basis here, you know, the, the we have the jobs are out there, um, you know the we're you know we're seeing the how to develop on a mainframe is becoming so much easier, um, and you know just the investment that companies are putting into mainframe. All of these are really increasing. This is why we're starting to see um, this renaissance, for lack of a better term, into mainframe starting to happen. Um, so you know we have been really fortunate, and you probably even more than me, uh, just seeing this firsthand, seeing these students, these newcomers into this space, um, you know, start to jump in and start to invest their careers in it. Um, and I, I don't, I don't think I have a slide on this in here, but you know, we have a we have a great podcast that I encourage all of you to check oh, yeah, out. Oh yeah, the mainframe. I am a mainframer podcast. It's on every podcast client, and it and it talks to people all over their career. You know, everyone from um, a student who's just graduated to Ross Mori, and Ross Mori being the, you know, the GM of um, IBM Z. Um, and it really talks to people who have seen this as sort of a key part of their career and really where things are going. But um, I pulled out kind of a few success stories of folks, and some of these um, are on the Open Mainframe Project blog here. Um, you know, Sadashinu, um, you know, Dubey, he was uh, one of our uh, mentees from this past year. Um, he did a really, really, really good blog post. And, and I think he really captured it really nicely of, you know, you know, you think about just being um, a mainframe, you think about what it is. And, and these students maybe, you know, they, they have sort of the same sort of pop culture reference to what a mainframe is. Big, massive computer somewhere in the sky um, with a nice movie OS interface on it. Um, but, you know, him being able to engage in this was a life-changing moment for him, which is, it's a really fascinating thing. And I think we've heard this over and over again, and participating in some of these programmers, it's, it's opened this new door to him. Um, and I know you've seen just so much of that firsthand. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who else, uh, John, of uh, names that you have in there, but it was uh, uh, Salasu. Yep. Uh, Ellie. Yeah, he's one I I wonder I didn't get him in the deck here, but I know you guys have worked with him. Yeah, this this kid is amazing. He's a medical student <laughs> in Nigeria of all places. He applied for uh, a mentorship, and uh, well, we took him on and uh, here at Vicom, and we had him uh, help work with the the voice assistant I just mentioned to you, and uh, other things to in regards to a, a bot and so on. Uh, and uh, the, the kit was just absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I'm st and we're still working with him because he still wants to keep working with it. And he tries to fit us in between his mm -hmm. medical school stuff and that he's got going on. And he just kind of won't go away. <laughs> no, and it, it, he was so excited about this that he brought in his brother yeah. this year to be it. You know, so we have Muhammad yeah. Ali, um, who's yeah. his brother, who's now is a mainframer. He's brought it all through the family. It, it's. He, he, I'd love you guys to to meet him sometime because he's just quite a, a, a different for someone of his age and mm -hmm. what he's. A medical student, what's he doing with in and around a mainframe? He's just kind of, kind of interested, and he's kind of got a. So we got a, maybe a doctor of a mainframe now. Who knows? Yeah, you know what? It gives him some career options. You know, if hey, this whole if this whole surgery thing doesn't pan out, right? Well, he's got to <laughs> keep all of us old guys to keep the mainframe around. So right, 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 right. And then Bo he can help out in the meantime. So we got Bo to both ends of the stick <laughs> there, right? Uh <laughs> Never know. Um, this is another one of um, Innocent, and I think he worked um, with Jerry Edgington, and he's yep. uh, with uh, Jerry Edgington Western Southern Life, um, and he leads our polycephaly project. And again, another great story here. He's always wanted to learn about the mainframe, and this is sort of the first time he was able to um, connect to it and being able to work with. And Jerry, you've known Jerry for years. Oh, yeah. Jerry's a stalwart in this industry. Yeah, he's the one that's brought the polycephaly project to, and it just became a regular project as opposed to an incubation project. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why is that uh, you might have all heard of the development tool called Jenkins. 
and uh, people wanted to see that made available for not only the Linux environment uh, that's available on the mainframe, but also the uh, ZOS environment, and he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, with that being said, uh, some of the large banks around here are actually bringing polycephaly in mm -hmm. to use it uh, because they wanted to have it. And lo and behold, here is a uh, major banks, the major banks that are bringing in polycephaly and using it in their everyday development. Exactly, exactly. And this is also a great you know, example of innovation coming out of you know, a mainframe customer and being brought out onto the scene as well. And you know, there's just so many stories with this. The one, and I, I, I wanted to put a slide in it, but I couldn't find, I was putting my slides together late on this, um, was I think you remember the student that ported um, Alpine Life. Oh, yeah, um, from Vietnam. Yeah, from Vietnam. Um, his name is escapes me at the moment. I knew it off the top of my head. Um, oh, uh, Juan. Juan. Yeah, Juan Tong, he was a student. He was one of our first mentees. Yep. He ported Alpine Linux over to mainframe, um, then ended up moving here to the United States. Um, we went to grad school at Marist, and now he works for IBM. Now he works for IBM. You know, we had another student from, uh, that worked on Cloud Foundry um, for Z um, that uh, worked with um, Suse, who's one of our members as well. Now he works in Suse in Germany yep. um, and is continuing to work on that. Um, so we're just seeing so many, and, and I even remember like when our first class of mentees came through, we invited them, I think, to um, a Z Council um, in New Jersey. Yep. And everyone in the room was just so awestruck by, you know, how smart the kids, how smart the kids, how, how interested they, really they were. Um, you know, I think there's a couple people in that class that are still in mainframe right now, still employed. Yeah. Yeah. Ro what's Robert's last name? Uh, Robert Starr. He works for ADP. He works for ADP. Yep. So. He's a, he has an analyst over there. Um, I ran into Sebastian Wynn that was in that class. He works for an IBM partner in Germany. Yep. Um, so, so many more new people that are coming into this. Um, and again, they're seeing, you know, the opportunity that people are investing more in mainframe. They're seeing that the, you know, developing on it is a great experience and they see these are amazing paying jobs. A younger generation coming up. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I encourage you all here, you know, there's a lot to learn about um, open source in the mainframe. This is a exploding area that we're seeing. Um, you know, just across the open mainframe project alone, uh, we have 21 projects and working groups that you know, if you look at all of these projects, they're in different areas of, you know, mainframe operating system from ZOS, Z Linux, um, ZVM. You know, ZVM, you know, things in between. But they're all in here as technologies that are bridging that gap. They're connecting that mainframe more tightly back into the rest of the enterprise, uh, which is, you know, a, which is exactly where enterprises are going. You know, they have these mainframes. Um, they see the immense value that they have for them but they want to optimize how they're using them. And you know, with technologies like these, they're all making those connections um, you know, really nicely there. And you know, we're just seeing even forward work happening and you know, things like COBOL. You know, who would have, I always joke about this now anymore, but who would have thought two years ago we'd be sitting here talking about COBOL as, as the new thing? But, and what, and the, the COBOL group inside the, the uh, Open Mainframe Project did a survey mm -hmm. and and uh, they surveyed a lot of, of customers, uh, and th they found that there is still billions of lines of COBOL call code used every single day. So and it's and it's increased over the last twenty years. And it has grown, grown, it's, and not and just it's like still growing. Yeah, and not just like grown marginally, like grown a significant amount. Oh, yeah. So this is this is a growing area we're seeing here. Um, in addition, there's even more open source projects that are centric to mainframe, and I encourage you, um, you know, many, much like a lot of our foundations here, we have a landscape, check it out, l.openmainframeproject.org. You can see a lot of what that's coming to be. Um, and just broad open source projects. You know, this is a, and this is probably even a subset, but these are the ones that I think even are best supported of just open source projects that run well on the mainframe and that people are using on the mainframe today. Um, so you can see that cross section happening there, and you know we have this is all possible because of this large group of vendors that see this is where the future is going. Um, Forty six supporting organizations, um, and and the numbers here on mentees and contributors and contributions are low. I mean this is continuing to grow 
um, you know, exponentially over time, but we're, we're, we're seeing just so much more interest driving into this area. We'll soon see the logo of City on that too. Yes, we are, yep. Um, so, I mean, for everyone here in the audience here, um, if this is an area of interest to you, um, if you um, have, you know, in your employer, if you're, you're doing things in the mainframe space and you want to just see, hey, how do I get involved in this? Or maybe it's just tangibly interesting. Um, you know, open mainframe, probably, there's a lot of different ways you can get involved. Um, you know, you can get involved at events. We, we do an annual event, open mainframe summit. We're actually doing our, we've done it virtually, but next year we're going to be in person in Philadelphia. Um, so you can take the train down and, and check that out. Um, and that's in next September. Uh, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on on social and, and, and we're, you know, at events like these here as well. Um, projects that are happening and, and we're bringing in new projects all the time um, that are really complement uh, a lot of this space here. And then opportunities for people to join the community as well. Um, but if for nothing else, um, come find us out here on social. We have a lot of great content that is being driven here, both um, LinkedIn, Twitter. We also have a newsletter that is a great way that if you know you want to kind of you know keep on what's going, subscribe to that. Subscribe to that. Very easy there, um, and just a whole bunch of other ways you can just you know get involved here. Um, events, webinars, projects, sort of the whole nine yards. Um, Everything we talked to you about is pretty much at openmainframeproject.org. It's easy to remember. It is absolutely super easy. Um, so, what are we, parting thoughts, and maybe even if we got some questions from the audience as well. One thing I'd like to say is that um, I don't know about you, but you know, being an old guy like I am, I'm always very proud to see someone like John uh, taking on the responsibility and driving the project like he has. With, and you know, he, I saw him come from nothing to where he is right now, talking like this, and it, you know. It, it's very, I'm very proud of that and very proud to have seen you, John, grow like you have to this point that you have, so. You're making me blush, Lynn. That's what I, <laughs> of course, that's, that's my job. No, this is, this is a fun, this is a great community to work with and I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to be able to and, 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 you know, other folks here, Alan in the audience, I've worked with him, he's a member of our board, Alan Clark from SUSE and, um, yeah, this is, this is a, this is a really exciting project and, and I think this is also, a group of people that just cares about so, I mean, all, all of our project communities care about the future, but I think this group here recognizes, you know, the, the mainframe group. Yeah, they recognize the decades that people have put their life into it and they're wanting to make sure that that carries forward for decades to come. And that's, that's can be a very unique thing because so many of the technologies we deal with, um, they're new, they're within the last, you know, 10, 20, I mean, Linux only 30 years old. Um, you know, mainframes, you know, going on 70. There is no other architecture that has endured mm -hmm. as much, as long as the mainframe. Nothing. Yeah. There and are, we, there's and some that have come and gone, right? Some that have tried to copy it, some that have tried to replace it. And not only has it endured, it has uh, resonated to the best year ever in its history. And I don't see it changing, and it's because more people are becoming smart enough to understand its value to the world. Exactly, exactly. If um, you turned off Facebook and Google and Twitter and all these social media things, everybody would be oh, pretty mad, <laughs> but the world would still keep on going. Go turn off all the mainframes and see what happens. Airplanes <laughs> that fall out of the sky, banks would go under. Yeah, good, good luck buying that coffee, right? <laughs> Retailers would go under, insurance company. Yeah. The world would be in complete disarray and maybe even stop to exist. Yeah. It could. It is. It is. So much of it is powering it. And, and so much of our just technology heritage is built upon it. Like, I, I remember... Um, you know, Jim Zemelin, you know, would always joke with me and he said, you know, my grandpa, you know, was a mainframe. His grandpa took him to share, you know, when he was a kid several times. Oh, yeah. um, and, and he would, and he would and he would, and he would, he would always go to his grandpa and he would say, you know, hey, this is this cool thing that's going on in the Linux kernel or, you know, this new technology is coming out. His grandpa would just sit there and he's like, Jim, we did this decades ago in mainframe. <laughs> like, this is nothing new. Um, and, and I always found that, you know, just it's so much, even open source, 
you know, many people don't even realize, you know, you want to trace open source and they trace it back to the free, you know, software foundation and the free software movement of the late 70s, early 80s. You really want to trace open source back, it's actually back to mainframe. You know, with the launch of Share, it started. It started in 1955 with Share. That's where you trace it all back. First open source project. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure the free software people want me to say this, but it's it's not the GNU tools. It's CBT tape, which was a gentleman by the name of Arnie Castellano, mm -hmm. who pulled together all of these shared uh, scripts and tools and things like that that people would go to share and contribute and share back with one another. That's the term share. Yep. He pulled it together and made it on a tape, um, which you can still get the tape to this day. You yep. can send him a couple bucks. It's not already running. It's a guy named Sam Golomb that runs it. Yep. But um, you can send him a couple bucks in the mail and you can get a tape of it. But since 1970, he has maintained this as an open source project. Again, back in the day. And it's hosted at the Open Mainframe Project. You know, so pretty much what I, I think we see the oldest open source project out there before open source, before free software, before all of these licenses were a thing. Here is this guy pulling it together. Um, you know, CBT, Connecticut Bank and Trust, which is a bank that hasn't been in a bank for 30 years. Although I heard they didn't, there's a new um, version of it, not even related, but um, it, it's fascinating. We just see so much of the heritage coming from here. Names and get recycled. Yeah, you know, it, everything gets recycled. We're only so creative as humans. Um, so but, listen, we're, we're going to be here for a while. Yep. Uh, we're running out of time. So if you don't think of questions now, don't be worried to come up to us and talk to us. We, we'll, and we're going to be here for a while, roaming the hallways along with you yep. during, during the breaks. We welcome any kind of conversation or questions or ideas you might have. Yep, absolutely. And thank you all. It's great being back in person. I haven't seen this guy in two years. So no. <laughs> that's great. First time traveling for me since March 9th, 2020. Yeah, I'm about the same, yeah. yeah. February, yeah, so. Well, great, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.